What is up, everybody? I am your host, and I am your reigning, defending, undisputed WWE pay-per-view champion. And my first title defense, I am undefeated. I defeated two dudes. I am your hot commodity, the WWE pay-per-view champion, Aunt C, killing it in the game, Aunt Money. I got my one person who, unfortunately, didn't do so well in the Rumble match, but it's okay. Because he has a chance at Elimination Chamber in our rematch. Introduce yourself, my friend. Christian Rouse, co host on Sensor Pro Wrestling Podcast. I can't believe I lost. Um, you know, it, it was just, I feel like, you know, I feel like the men's Royal Rumble was really predictable. So I, I see why you got that right. But I didn't, I don't know, I didn't expect Rhea Ripley to go number one and win it all. So I just, but I don't know. I know the best way you can win, Christian, next time. Just go with whatever answer I go with. You're going to win next. Well, I don't know. You might not. It might be because, like, we all know the Elimination Chamber is kind of really predictable because uh, it's right before Mania. Um, but I think whoever wins the prediction, we got to get – because we know Rome, I, I know Roman's going to beat Sammy. We all know the obvious is. Uh, but, you know, with that United States Chamber, that, that could go – that could be anyone's game. So I'm mm-hmm. excited for that. But – we got to cover the Royal Rumble first. That was that. It was it was a decent show. It was a decent Royal Rumble. It's live in San Antonio, Texas, at the Alamodo, Alamodo, Alamo Dome, um, and uh, Pat McAfee returns to star off the show, and everybody was really surprised to see him. I was Michael still... Cole was surprised. He didn't. It wasn't scripted. Nope. He was genuinely happy. And he was genuinely surprised. Him. Um, Corey Graves pretty much looks upset and like is like annoyed, but I think yeah, they didn't know he was gonna be there. He was just looking like what the fuck. Uh, he gives Corey Graves a suck it taunt, and Corey just looks upset. Were you excited to see Pat McAfee back on SmackDown? Some fans weren't happy about it, but what do you I think? I was very happy to see. I think look, I like Wade Barrett, but I think he's very boring as an announcer. <clears throat> so I hope McAfee comes back to SmackDown full time. Now that college football season you knows it's been over for two weeks now. I I think I I'm, I hope he comes back. Um, you know it, it would suck for Barrett just to you know kind of throw him out of the way, but we want McAfee. We want McAfee. I agree. And Pat McAfee is the bomb. I was excited to see him. I popped when he came out, uh, and I was explaining. I was like, "This is who Pat McAfee is. This he's the bomb." And I was excited for the night seeing him because I knew we were going to be in for some funny uh commentating but i was surprised for this the first match of the night was the 30 men's royal rumble match i thought this would have been the main event but you know they opened the show with it and because of that i thought the women's match was going to have more surprises and more stuff was going to happen but it's okay we'll get there when we get there so the person to draw number one and the man and the men's Royal Rumble match was a WWE Intercontinental Champion Gunther, and the person who drew number two was his opponent at Clash at the Castle back in September, Sheamus. And when that happened, I was excited because I said to myself, "These two are going to brawl and you know start off the Rumble match." So I was excited for that. Um, both men try to eliminate each other, but they can't. Sheamus nails an Irish curse backbreaker. Um, Number three is The Miz. He comes out, and he doesn't get in the ring at first. He tries to distract Sheamus, but Sheamus rolls under the ropes and attacks The Miz. Number four is current NXT half-tag team champion Kofi Kingston. Kofi nails a double cross body and then a boom drop. Number five comes in, and that's Johnny Gargano. Happy to see him. Um, Johnny nails and ends the green of floating DDT to The Miz. Um, and pretty much, they just help destroy The Miz. Um, and Sheamus nails a bro kick and nails 25 beats to The Miz, and The Miz is then eliminated. Number six is the other half of the NXT Tag Team Champions, Xavier Woods. Um, then number seven, we have Karrion Cross. Not a lot of action going on here. Number eight, we have Chad Gable. Number nine, we have Drew McIntyre coming into the match. Drew ends up nailing a big boot to Karrion Cross, eliminating Cross from the match. Those two obviously had a rivalry back this past year. Um, number 10 is Santos Escobar. Number 11, we have Angelo Dawkins. Then uh, Xavier Woods is eliminated from the match. And then I don't know what happens to Kofi Kingston in this spot. He Was he supposed to land on the 
chair. I don't understand. He, he, you know, Kofi's known for doing shit like that. So who who knows? It was a weird moment, but I don't. I don't think Kofi was supposed to be eliminated, but he did get eliminated from the match from that moment. Number twelve was the Beast Brock Lesnar, and it was good to see Brock back because you know it brock back hell is going to be hell is going to be paid to everybody brock nail suplex city two santos escobar um chad gable angelo dawkins all those guys are eliminated and then number 13 the almighty bobby lashley and when lashley came out i popped because we know lashley and brock have had it out for each other brock has fucked over lashley for a couple of weeks brock and gunther face off before anything can happen Lashley spares Brock and everybody else, and then Lashley counters an F5 and clotheslines Brock Lesnar outside of the ring. Bobby Lashley eliminates Brock Lesnar from the Royal Rumble match. Then number 14, we have Baron Corbin. And number 15, we have Seth frickin' Rollins entering the show. Uh, 16, we have Otis. Excited to see him, I guess. The number 17 Rey Mysterio is supposed to come out, but it's not Rey that shows up. It is uh, Dominic at number... Well, Rey's music plays. No one shows up. Number 18 is Dominic Mysterio. Dominic comes out wearing Rey's mask, and um, he tries to rip the mask, but he can't really do it. Uh, but yeah, so pretty much, I guess we're assuming that Dominic attacked Rey before he could come out. Number 19 is Elias, and Elias gets eliminated pretty quickly from the match. Number 20, we have Finn Balor. 21, our first surprise, Booker T, Hall of Famer, comes out. And, you know, he didn't really last too long. But it was good to see him, um, you know, get in the ring, get involved. You know, I wish there was a more appropriate legend than Booker T in there. But it's okay, you know, whatever. Right, I didn't. It was it was surprising to me, too, just because he just does so much with the NXT stuff. I didn't think he would do in-ring competition again. Yeah. But it was... You know, he he probably just was like, put me in there for like five minutes and then I'm out. <laughs> that was pretty much what happened. 22, we have Damian Priest. He's going to help Finn Balor and Dominic now all of Judgment Day is in the Royal Rumble match. 23, we got Montez Ford. And then as Judgment Day is taking control, number 24, Edge comes back, the former leader Ooh. and creator of Judgment Day. He eliminates pretty much every member of Judgment Day um, from the match. And then Austin Theory comes down at 25. He's our WWE United States champion. Um, Rhea Ripley attacks Edge from outside of the ring. And as that goes down, Beth Phoenix returns and nails a spear to Rhea Ripley. That was great to see Beth Phoenix back. Number 26, we have the giant Omos. 27, Braun Strowman, the monsters among monsters. 28, we have Ricochet. Uh, 29, we have our, our second surprise. Logan Paul comes back. And there is a really crazy moment, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, and then number 30, well, Logan nails a buckshot Larry, which I think is really funny. Uh, the fact that he's pulling off Adam Page's finisher during this. Uh, <laughs> you know, I noticed that. It's like a little sort of sign. And then number 30, the end of the entrances are Co is, is Cody Rhodes. Uh, Cody actually eliminates Dominic after reversing a move, so I actually was wrong. Dominic didn't get eliminated until later on. Um, pretty much, uh, Seth nails a pedigree to Gunther. Rhodes pedigrees Gunther. Logan eliminates Rollins from out of nowhere. Seth Rollins is eliminated. Uh, there was a moment in the match when Ricochet and Logan Paul just pretty much springboard cross body into each other. That was superhuman to see that. Um, so... Here's a moment that happens. Logan Paul eliminates Rollins from out of nowhere. And now we know that it looks like Rollins is not happy about that, as we will talk about when we cover Raw. Uh, crossroads nails are crossroads of Logan Paul and tosses him out. And the final two of this match are Gunther and Cody Rhodes. Gunther superplexes Cody off the top rope. Cody nails a Cody cutter. Um, and nails a dragon screw to Gunther over across the ropes. Cody hits the shattered dreams. Gunther applies a sleeper hold. Um, Cody fades, but he drags Gunther over the top, but Gunther hangs on. Cody jumps off the top and is met with a chop. Cody nails the close rolls to Gunther and nails a clothesline. Cody Rhodes is your 2023 men's Royal Rumble winner. 
what did you think of the match and uh, Cody Rhodes getting the victory here, my friend? Um, well, we kind of talked about this earlier. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not happy. You know how they did the whole setup uh, with Cody Rhodes. Um, I just thought spoiling his return, even though we already knew it was gonna happen, just, just sucked. Um, especially putting him at entry number thirty or thirty. I meant, um, that's just. It's very predictable at that point. Um, you know, we didn't we didn't see. They said we were gonna see some some surprises. I don't think Booker T is much of a surprise. I don't think Edge is much of a surprise. Um, and I don't think Logan Paul is much of a surprise. I kind of just think it's returns. Um, it's pointless returns. Um, I, I I didn't think the Rumble was too bad. Um, cool thing, you know, Seth Rollins did go on Instagram Live the other day, I believe it was yesterday, and did say that he does not like Logan Paul, blah, 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 um, so we, we could pot potentially see a match between them two at Mania, which would be dope, um, Gunther looks sharp, sharp in the Rumble match, um, you know, he, he, he's been, he's been doing it, um, like I said, though, I, I'm, I'm just not thrilled on the way they did the whole Cody Rhodes thing, um, you know, me personally, I thought the Women's Rumble was better, and we'll talk about it when we cover the Women's Rumble, but um, I, I, I'm, I'm just disappointed on, on this Rumble, um, especially because, you know, I, this is the way, this is, this is how they started the pay-per-view, um, mm -hmm. so I don't know, it, it was kind of disappointing. There were some good moments, um, I thought Lashley eliminating Lesnar was, mm -hmm. was good, too. Um, that was awesome, finally getting payback for right. that. What do you so, think about Logan Paul eliminating Rollins? Because it seems like that might be Rollins' opponent for Mania. Uh, what do you think of, of that? That sh look, I, I never talked shit about Logan Paul. I like the Paul. I like the Pauls. I like both of them. Um, you know, Logan's an incredible Logan. He picked it, up. and like I've heard so many people say this, so I'm not even gonna talk too much about it. But I'm just gonna get a, a brief uh, summary of it. Logan Paul is one of two celebrities, in my opinion, the other one being Bad Bunny. Um, you know, they, they came into the business. They came into, you know, WWE as for one match. Um, they didn't take it. They didn't goof off. They they, they were wrestling fans growing up. They were huge uh, in, in wrestling, uh, obviously, like, like we are. Like, they were just fans at one point, huge fans. So they know a little bit about the business. Um, they they knew how hard it took, and dude, they they kill it every time they go on. Uh, I don't think Logan Paul. I think the three times I've seen we've seen Logan Paul, he's looked great. Mm -hmm. He just looks. He just continues to keep getting better. So I think, and he he's fought the Miz, which people don't give him enough respect. Uh, for you know, he really did carry that match with Logan Paul's being his first big match. Yep. He fought Roman Reigns. Uh, that's no, no doesn't really need an explanation there. And Seth Rollins. So, you know, he keeps fighting three. He keeps fighting really good main event level uh, superstars that are only going to get him better too. So it should be a good match. I agree, man. I'm excited for the issues WrestleMania, but this Royal Rumble match I agree is kind of lackluster. You know, the surprise of Cody Rose is kind of spoiled. You know, I thought they were going to have bigger surprises because of that. But I do think the right person won. I'm interested to see Logan Paul and Seth Rollins. I am That's excited to see. That would be good. People are going to see that on the card. If it happens, they're going to be like, eh, I think it's going to be. A it might be good. I mean, listen, Logan Paul is great. Paul no, I'm sorry. Go, go, go. No, no, you go ahead. I was going to say that I do think that Seth Rollins is, is this version, this generation's, you know, Shawn Michaels is kind of like the WrestleMania, like Mr. I think Rollins is this generation's Mr. Think, WrestleMania, yeah. you know? Like, like I said, going back to it, that's why I think this is someone for good for Logan Paul mm -hmm. to go up against. And, um, fuck, I think I forgot what I was going to say here, but. And, Bro yeah. and Brock and Lash is going to steal the show at Mania if that happens. That would be really good, too, I think. So. We got a lot of stuff happening. Let's talk about our next match, though. The Mountain Dew Pitch Black match. Bray Wyatt taking on LA Knight. Uh, Bray, here's just some notes. Bray looks kind of creepy with the black face paint over his eyes. Uh, pretty much the neon purple lights, almost like a black light. Uh, Bray's paint is like the theme, kind of. That's the only way I can kind of describe it. It's weird. Bray attacks Knight, and LA Knight sends Bray into the steps. Knight nails a leaping counter. A leaping cutter to Bray through a table. Um, LA jumps off the top rope with a kendo stick to Bray Wyatt. 
However, Bray gets the win with the sister Abigail and a three count. After the match, Bray wears this creepy mask on his face, and uh, LA Knight runs away and hits Bray with kendo stick shots. LA continues to run off, but Bray locks in the mandible claw. Um, and then we see Uncle Howdy like high above like the situation on this like like almost like a um pedestal, and uh, basically um um Bray nods his head to Howdy. Howdy jumps off the t- off the pedestal with a flying elbow to LA Knight through the little like setup area where LA Knight was, and uh, we see a big explosion after Uncle Howdy jumps off. And uh, the Firefly Funhouse friends show up where Uncle Howdy was sitting. And uh, that's the end of the segment. So uh, talk about the match. But my question for you is now that we've seen this, you know, first, how do you attack Bray? Are these guys going to be a team? Is Howdy going to, you know, betray Bray? Because tonight at, Wrestle- at Royal Rumble, they were working together. Um, and what is this new character that bray has with this weird uh face this weird mask what do you think is going on here well it sucks about that the question about you know what what uh what's going on with this new i don't know um we we've only seen this at the rumble i hate how last night on smackdown we didn't hear anything from fucking bray wyatt anything from la um, i did get scared shitless though no, yeah, it it was, it was like, the, the face popping, and we'll talk about that. But when I was sitting there watching the rocket chair, and I was like, "Ooh, I jumped back." It, it it was honestly, it was just, it was just another. I don't know. It was just a dominant win by Bray. Um, it, it wasn't great. I mean, I, I don't know. There just wasn't this match. Kind of like, I wasn't excited about the match to begin with, and watching this match just made me i wasn't honestly i don't think i was really watching this match it was really boring yeah they also went by fast i really i noticed a lot of these matches were pretty quick and i'm not going to talk about it in a recap but like there were a lot of promos throughout the night and i didn't understand like why that was necessary when you could have had like more time given to the matches that's something that i really don't like and um, I'm not going to, you know, I don't, I know Vince isn't head of creative or anything, but I mean, he's back and we're already starting to see matches get cut. Um, I don't know. I'm more into the wrestling, but yeah, I'm interested to see what's going to happen here because I do like the supernatural element to it, but we need to start getting some kind of answers because it's just now confusion and they really didn't do anything. This is Bray's first match back and it's like a four minute match and it really wasn't anything to talk about, but yeah, I agree. So we find out that WrestleMania goes Hollywood is 63 days away. I'm excited. I can't wait for WrestleMania goes Hollywood. We're going to turn all the fucking up for that. Oh, um, yeah. We also got a promo for the new WWE 2K. Was it 2K23 video game? Um, John Cena. And, you know, you're going to compete in the matches that he lost against. I'm excited to play that. Um, we then yeah, get the Rey Mysterio it. one was good. Oh, yeah, see, I didn't get to do that one. I should do it again. Oh, I finished it not too long ago. Actually. I should play it. It was good. Um, AW Fight Forever is coming out soon. Yep, we got a lot of games, a lot of stuff happening. Uh, we get an indoor attendance record, 51,338 people in attendance for the Royal Rumble. Huge crowd for a lackluster show, um, which is kind of sad for the beginning of 2023. We're going on the WWE Raw Women's Championship. The Raw Women's Champion Bianca Belair defending against Alexa Bliss. Both women brawl to start. Bliss drops Bianca on her neck and lands a drop kick. Bliss chokes Bianca, but Bianca hits a suplex. Bianca with a face slam and a springboard moonsault and gets a two count. Bliss nails double knees and a senton and gets a two. Bianca gets the win after a KD. Um, quick match too. Afterwards, we get an Uncle Howdy promo. No interference from Bray or Uncle Howdy, just a basic clean win. Um, what does this mean for Alexa Bliss? And and you know, this is again another rivalry that kind of ended quick, kind of like LA Knight and Bray. What do you think is going on here? It, it was an average match. Um, obviously, we know Bianca Belair was going to win. Crowd was dead. Um, yeah, like you said, um, I don't, I don't know what the what the story is with Alexa Bliss now. Um, my my guess is I, I guess they'll keep this Alexa character going on a little bit, you know, 
until we more until we see more of Uncle Howdy um and Bray Wyatt uh come along um mm-hmm. you know last night on SmackDown they did a dark match and I'm only mentioning this because kind of has something to do here uh in my yeah. opinion we saw last night that LA Knight and Wyatt did like a dark match after the match I mean after SmackDown so maybe you know I don't think they have another rivalry going on uh, after the Rumble I could be wrong but if they don't I feel like now is a time where we all three of them, Alexa Bliss, Howdy, and Wyatt, do something together. All three of them, because this is confusing me. I think this is confusing a lot of people, which is why people aren't as interested into these matches as they should be. Um, I thought the crowd was dead during the Pitch Black match as well as this match. Um, and I, I think Uncle Howdy, it was Uncle Howdy. Something had to do with I don't know. It, it, it's a, it's a big mess in my opinion. <laughs> um, I, I, they need to do something here because again, this has a potential to be a story, a good storyline here. And with WrestleMania season now being here, they a, a lot of these storylines need to pick up. And I'm not talking yeah. about beyond. I'm not talking about just this one. And you know, the Mysterio one needs to pick up. All these storylines need to start picking up now because they've gone nowhere and they are continuing to mm-hmm. go nowhere. Um, my only question is. I, what's next for Bianca Belair? I can give two shits about Alexa Bliss. What's next for the Raw Women's yep, Champion? That's true. Rhea Ripley didn't pick her. She yeah, we'll her. get there. Yeah, we'll go so ahead. What, what, what's next? Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, uh, good. Not going to go ahead. Go ahead. We're good. Um, but I, I, you know, she wasn't picked. But so I kind of spoiled it. I don't care. Sorry, Rhea Ripley already didn't pick her. So what's next for the Raw Women's Champion? You know, your Raw Women's Champion has to have a match at Mania, and she is one of the most over. So. I don't know. We'll see what's next for Bianca. I, just, I just think don't I don't, I honestly think, and we'll talk about what's come up. I don't think we're gonna get the match that Rhea wants at Mania. I think something's gonna happen between now and then. I mean, and maybe they will just keep it that. But I really we'll get there. We'll get there. But I'd rather see if if we'll get there because I don't want to say anything, give too much, but we'll get there. Yeah, I'm confused. All right, yeah, we'll get there. But I think Bianca Belair is a uh, good person to walk into WrestleMania with the title. Um, we then get a promo for Elimination Chamber, which is coming to you live from Montreal, Quebec, Canada, on February 18th on 2023. That's coming up in what, like two weeks two weeks yeah not even it's yeah in sammy's hometown so yeah means hometown um we now have our 30 women royal rumble match we'll cover uh the match here quick number one entrant in the match is rhea ripley number two is Liv morgan that's interesting to see the two of them former tag team uh competitors facing off against each other number three we have dana brooke who you know again really not excited to see her but okay Number four, we have Emma coming back. I, well, not that she's coming back, but, you know, entering the first time entering the Women's Royal Rumble match since she's been in other companies since they started. Number five, Shayna Baszler, the submission magician. Um, number six, we have Bailey. Excited to see her. Seven, B-Fab came out and uh, got quickly eliminated. Uh, number eight, we have the NXT Women's Champion, Roxanne Perez. She comes out, excited to see her. Number nine, we have Dakota Kai, current WWE Women's Tag Team Champion. Number 10, we have the other half of the Women's Tag Team Champion, EO Sky, coming out. Um, number 11 was Natalia. She was ex- excited to come out. I was making fun of her hat the whole time, so this looks like a <laughs> man. Her hat did not look, it did not do her any justice. I was cracking up the entire time. Um, but Natalia came back. I was excited to see her. She looks great with her hair cut. She looks really good. Uh, number 12, Candice LeRae comes out, um, and Damage Control is basically in control of the match. Number 13, of NXT superstar Zoe Stark. She comes out. Excited to see her. 14, Zia Lee. Uh, number 15 is the man, Becky Lynch, who basically, she attacks Damage Control, um, and basically, number 16, we get Tegan Knox. 17 came the person I was the most interested in. Asuka came back with her whole entire clown gimmick. Um, excited to see this new and improved Asuka. She looked great in there. 18 was Piper Niven. Glad they got rid of D Drop and she's back to her original name. She looked like a powerhouse in there. Number 19 was Tamina. 
no one's Nina than to Nina. Um, number 20 is Chelsea Green, who was a surprise. She gets eliminated very quickly in the match. Becky Lynch eliminates damage control with tag members. Bailey then eliminates Becky Lynch. And then Liv Morgan eliminates Bailey. And uh, Becky Lynch draws a damage control in the crowd. Number 21, we have Zelina Vega. She looked really great in the ring. 22, Big Mommy Cool Raquel Rodriguez. 23, Mia Yim. And then we had 24 was Lacey Evans. She entered the match quickly. 25 was cool. Michelle McCool watching the show from the fans area, having to come in from the crowd to fight in the Royal Rumble match. She did pretty well for herself. 26 is NXT wrestler Indy Hartwell. 27, Sonia Deville. 28 was Shotzi. 29, we had Nikki Cross. And at number three, the surprise entrant, Nia Jax, who had some bloodline looking gear for this match. Um, a lot of action takes place. All the women have to work together to eliminate Nia from the match. The final three women are Rhea Ripley, Asuka, and Liv Morgan. Um, to get kind of a little bit of poetic justice, Rhea Ripley eliminates Raquel Rodriguez, who eliminated um, her before. Um, Asuka blows Miss to Liv Morgan, and uh, Rhea eliminates Asuka. And Rhea Ripley, oh no, I said it was poetic justice. Oh, this is why it's poetic justice, because I think it was um, you, it was Tyler who said that Raquel Rodriguez was going to win, but mm -hmm. it was my girl that eliminated her, so poetic justice there. Um, but yeah, Rhea wins the 2023 Women's Royal Rumble match with four minutes to go. Uh, what were your highlights of the match, and uh, were you happy to see Rhea get the victory here? Before I talk about Rhea winning, uh, did my pick not even enter the Rumble? No, you went with Bailey. She didn't even participate in the Rumble, right? She did. She got involved. Yeah, she did pretty good, and she got eliminated by Liv Morgan. She um she eliminated Becky Lynch. My mind went blank for some reason. I don't know why. Like even like I know you just said it, but like even when I was um. Like watching the rumble, I was confused. Like, where the, the fuck you were? You were wrong. The Rock didn't show up in the rumble match. Okay, that's yeah, what you're thinking I of. I'm confused. Yeah, um, I thought the like I said, I thought the women's rumble was way better than the men's. More surprises, you know. We saw Chelsea Green. Kind of sucks what they did to her. Um, you know, we saw Michelle McCool do her thing. You know, it, this women's uh, rumble was a little bit more full of surprises. Uh, which was which was fun to watch. Um, you know, Rhea Ripley starting at number one, getting beat up by Beth Phoenix earlier, and then winning it. You know, it it's good. Um, I I haven't been the biggest fan of Rhea Ripley. We we kind of went at it when I went to the live show. Me and her. Um, she wasn't excited to see me, but you know, she deserves to win this Rumble. I thought you know it's finally her time coming. Um. It, it, I don't know. She she's been the most dominant super, uh, female in WWE, in my opinion, at least for uh, for quite several. The years. The fans have been obsessed with her this whole year, man. I mean, yeah, she's she's been doing it. Um, you know, she's been doing a lot with the Judgment Day. So I'm I'm hyped now that we're finally see her back to doing more on her own. Even though she still is with the Judgment Day, but still, um, she's not with them as much. She's getting ready ready for you know. I'm not, I kind of just said it earlier. I won't say it again who she's going to fight at WrestleMania. But, uh, you know, I'm excited. Um, she's dominant. Um, totally. She kicked ass. I At this point in the night, I was jumping up and down for joy. I was getting like, then a, getting her than a pig and shit because I was like, yes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was happy that Rhea Ripley won. I think that she deserved it. She came in and spent like over like an hour and something minutes in the match. Um, I'll get you the actual uh, number when we come back. But we're going to take our first our break of the night. When we come back, we're going to cover uh, the WWE Undisputed Championship main event, Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens, and the break up, the destruction of the bloodline is beginning. We'll talk about it when we come back. Stay tuned. What is up, everybody? I am your current W and longest reigning WWE pay per view champion, the hot commodity Aunt C. And I'm joined by my good friend and co host. Introduce yourself, my friend. My name is Christian Morales, co host of the Uncensored Wrestling Pod. 
I'm very excited to hear. We just talked about, you know, the Royal Rumble um, recap. So we got to talk about what happens next, right? So mm -hmm. let's talk about Monday Night Raw. Two nights removed from the Royal Rumble. Raw is live January 30th in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And Raw, of course, starts off with the 2023 Men's Royal Rumble winner, Cody Rhodes, the American Nightmare himself. And Cody says, I thought to myself I was going to be WWE champion and be the next John Cena when I was 19. I would tell myself triumph became tragedy. I would tell myself I would be the first in its family to main event WrestleMania. And it's true. It will be. Um, truth be told, I wouldn't tell that 19-year-old a single thing. Every splinter up this ladder has been worth it. Wrestling has more than one royal family, and WWE has more than one family in here. For that to be true, I have to stand across from the bloodline, across from the biggest superstar on the planet. I have to stand across Roman Reigns. I have a great deal of respect for Roman. WrestleMania is 62 days away, and at WrestleMania, undesirable becomes undeniable and after wrestlemania you can be the tribal chief but one thing roman will not be is undisputed champion and then the judgment day come out and finn says are you going to do anything original or continue to copy all, everything off of me dominic says you ruined our plans last night you ruined my moment in the royal rumble match if we were in prison you wouldn't last the day jamie priest says Rhea earned her spot at and the Royal Rumble, the number one, the number one, she got the number one spot while the Golden Boy got number 30. Dominic says, you owe me an apology. Cody says, Dominic, I have to ask, are you trying to scare me straight? He says, I have immense respect for your dad. And the Dominic goes on to say, I have no respect for my dad or even your dad. Which, you know, is a big, ooh, no, no, right? Uh, Cody goes on to say, I'll beat your ass anywhere. And uh, Finn Balor pretty much challenges Cody. And uh, basically, Edge comes down and attacks at Judgment Day. And Cody helps Edge attack Judgment Day. And uh, what do you think about Finn Balor and all these guys interrupting Cody Rhodes? We know Cody is going to take on Roman. I like the idea of family versus family, the Rhodes family versus the bloodline here. And what do you think about... Uh, Judgment Day getting involved in this situation. Edge is obviously on the heart, but what do you think about this opening Raw? You know, you got to start uh, Raw with your, your Raw Rumble winner, so, so that was good. Um, you know, just another basic good promo. Um, crowd likes him. Welcome back to Monday Night Raw. Um, surprised to see the Judgment Day out here. Um, I think everything Damian Priest said was absolutely true <laughs> and funny. Um you know, the fans started chaining to kick his ass. Um, so that, that was good. Um, you know, just one thing, Cody did mention the undisputed title rather than just getting one or two or one or the other. So as of right now, both titles are, are staying together. But uh, like I mentioned in the Royal Rumble uh, recap, I'd like to see these titles split. But for now, good promo. Um, excited to see what's how they're going to build this match up here. Yeah, I think. I was excited to see this because this is Cody's first, you know, night, his first match back on Raw. And having a point like Finn Balor, you know, that that that's great to start off your night. But we start off, well, this episode of Raw has the first Elimination Chamber qualifying matches. And we have Chad Gable with Otis taking on Seth Rollins. There are some notes. Chad nails a German or Seth and gets a two count. Chad dives onto Seth off the apron and gets a nails a flying headbutt and gets a two. Chad nails a dragon screw leg sweep and misses a moonsault. Seth hits a buckle bomb. Seth nails a super kick and a falcon arrow and gets a two. Chad nails a really cool cliffhanger DDT and gets a two count. The end comes after Seth misses a stomp, but nails a pedigree. And Seth Rollins is now going to be in the WWE United States Championship Elimination Chamber match with Austin Theory being in there. What do you think of this match? And uh, obviously, Seth Rollins is the right person to go with, right? Oh, obviously. Um, I don't, I don't know if he's gonna, you know, win it all, but I thought it was a good match. I'm gonna say this for like the fifth week in a row. They're continuing to give Chad Gable 
singles matches, like, and then losing, but he always puts on a good match every time, and I'm tired of fucking saying it. I like Chad Gable. He needs, he should have, Chad Gable should be in this elimination chamber. I'm not saying he should win it, but he should be in it. Um, but he, obviously Seth Rollins is the man to go here. Um, it was, it was just a good match to the best workers on Raw. Yes, I'm calling Chad Gable one of the best workers. He is. 100%. He continues to just fucking put all, all you people over. So he's doing his shit. I wish they would do him a little better, but good match. Not in terms of like, um, because they really haven't given Chad much screen time. He doesn't have as much charisma, but he literally wrestles like Kurt Angle. If you were to watch it, they could be like brothers. Like, that's like, like the way they wrestle, it's interesting to see them. But I do think we're going to see the split in Alpha Academy. And uh, once that happens, and we'll talk about that later on because we got a little hint there. Once that happens, um, I think we'll get more of Chad Gable doing more of independent stuff, which will then be good for him uh, in terms of his career. But speaking of careers, we have our next match, the one half of the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions, EO Sky, with Dakota Kai and Bailey taking on Candice LeRae with Mia Yim. Here are some notes from this one. EO nails a face buster, and then EO dies onto Candice outside. Candice nails a German suplex off the top rope, and then hits a poison Rana and gets a two. Candice nails double knees, but distracts Candice LeRae. And EO Sky rolls up Candice to get the three count. Just another way to make damage control look dominant against the other women in the division. What did you think of this one? It was a decent match, though. I thought it was a decent match, yeah. Um, you know, there was, there was a lot of chaos in this match. You know, the numbers game helped, um, obviously, damage control. Um, you know, that... I don't know what to say, really, because I don't find... Um, what's her face? Candice LeRae too interesting i mean he's gargano's wife he she's a good wrestler i i'm obviously very familiar with her nxt stuff um she doesn't really you know do too much for me though neither does eo sky um so for me personally i thought the match was good but i just wasn't interested personally just like the crowd wasn't uh, i don't think the crowd was interested in this match at all um you know triple h loves these two nxt girls so he's just gonna keep booking them on tv he doesn't care um, no, I'm starting to notice a lot of favoritism on Triple H ever since he's taken over. It's better than Vince's product, don't get me wrong, but I, I really start to see the favoritism a little bit here. Um, you know, Dakota, Eos guy took some 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 rough in the ma- some rough bumps in the match. So Dakota Kai did, or not Dakota Kai. I, holy fuck, Candice LeRae did do her thing, but um, you know, th- this this match doesn't do much for me. I don't really think it does anything. Um, we we see Dakota and EO do a lot of single stuff when they currently have a tag team championship. So this is just weird. But the match was decent, but I'm just not interested in these two. I feel like if there was a more of a storyline, it would be a bit more interesting. But because yeah, they're just it's like they're thrown into fight. Um, well, this is interesting. The women's 2023 Royal Rumble winner Rhea Ripley comes out next. And Rhea says, two nights ago, I did the unthinkable, and now I get to choose whichever champion I want to face at WrestleMania. Three years ago, I turned 24, and I came here and challenged Charlotte Flair to a match at WrestleMania, and she put me in my place. Charlotte Flair is at the top, but I'm the disruptor. I don't like things being overplayed. Charlotte Flair, I advise you enjoy everyone bowing and rising to the queen because after wrestlemania they will rise to rhea ripley charlotte flair at wrestlemania i put you in your place so rhea makes her pick she is challenging charlotte flair to a rematch here is my only problem with this we have seen rhea i have seen rhea ripley versus charlotte flair live i saw that the night smackdown at madison square garden it was a dark match before. That's not a WrestleMania worthy match to me. I'm sorry. If I've seen it and they've done it at Hell in a Cell, they've done it at Money in the Bank, they've done it at Mania, they did it at a takeover, they've done it over and over and over again. Do Bianca versus Rhea. 
do something different. Make Charlotte lose the title. I don't want to see another Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte. I'm sure they'll have a good match, but this is WrestleMania goes Hollywood. And I have a feeling we're not going to see this. I have a feeling we're going to see Rhea versus somebody else. But what do you think about Rhea Ripley challenging the Queen Charlotte Flair? And she wants well, to put her in her place. Good points. I mean, we've seen this match numerous times. Um, you gotta understand, and that was the only thing I'm gonna say about it. Um, because you did bring up some good points. The only thing I I, I will add, they didn't have a crowd at WrestleMania 36. Um, this was a little bit, um, not the beginning of Rhea's career, but the beginning of her coming up to the main roster. Um, so, but again, I agree. Um, I don't, I don't think this is kind of a match I would like to see. Um, but I don't know if I'd like to see Rhea versus Bianca either. And yeah. I'll tell you why. Um, Bianca to me, she's, she has the looks and everything, but I, I don't think she's that good of a fucking performer. I'm keeping it in the book. I know every, everyone's going to talk shit. I know everyone, she's so over, even Jim Cornette loves her. But man, she she her promos are always so cringy. Every time I see her get a microphone in her hand, I just want to click. Like I don't want to hear her do any. I don't think her promos are good. I just think she's a good face for the business right now. Um, so that I, I don't know, and I feel like Rhea is more of a wrestler, of a better wrestler to me. Where I just think Rhea would just. If this wasn't scripted, Rhea would annihilate the shit out of Bianca Belair. Let's just be honest here. So I, I don't know. Like it, it, this would that would be a match to me where it's just like, okay, if Bianca wins here, I don't care if anyone says that pro wrestling is fake because like Rhea will dominate this bitch. But Charlotte, Charlotte, no, I don't think Rhea can dominate Charlotte like that. So, but again, I don't want to see the match. So it's kind of you yeah. gotta pick one, right? They're both you have to pick one. So. I would have picked Bianca just so we can see something new. So I do agree with you on that. Yes. But other than that, nothing really much to say about this pro. I mean, maybe they'll make it like a triple threat. Maybe. I just honestly don't think you're doing WrestleMania goes Hollywood and your women's Royal Rumble winner pick someone that she fought like four mm -hmm. times in the past year and a half. It's not like these two didn't feel like they literally were fighting in 2021. So hopefully they have a better play for Bianca then. Yeah, we'll see. She was even, I don't think she was barely even on this episode, but someone who was on this episode was Seth Rollins. He advances into the Elimination Chamber match, and Seth is backstage, and he says, what a win tonight. I'm going on to the Elimination Chamber to take the U.S. title back, and then it's WrestleMania time. Kathy Kelly then asks Seth Rollins about his thoughts about being eliminated by Logan Paul from the Royal Rumble match. And Seth just leaves. We talked about this during the Royal Rumble predictions. It looks like we're probably going to get Seth versus Logan. It will probably be a killer match. Um, but again, like Seth isn't happy being eliminated. I wouldn't be either. But uh, is there anything you want to add here, or just you know, like, just sort of the same thing? Where nope, we just got to see what Logan Paul. If Logan Paul decides to show up, and we'll see what goes from there. But I'm like I talked about it. I talked about it already. But I'm. It's going to be. It would be a banger match. Um, listen, banger after banger after banger. Okay, we have our next match, our next Elimination Chamber qualifying match. Baron Corbin with JBL taking on Johnny Gargano with Dexter Loomis. Gargano dives on dives, but Corbin lands a punch onto Gargano. Johnny nails a slingshot DET and gets a two. Corbin accidentally runs into the post. JBL looks to get involved, but Dexter Loomis has an axe and he cuts JBL's hat with the axe. And then Gargano rose up Corbin and gets a three. So now Austin Theory, Seth Rollins, and Johnny Gargano are in this Elimination Chamber match. I asked you earlier about Seth being the right guy. Was Johnny the right guy to win this one? Finally, yes. They're fucking, they've been booking him like shit since he's been back. <laughs> they've been doing this whole Dexter Loomis, Miz bullshit. When have we, we're finally starting to see Gargano wrestle. Like, yeah, Gargano's the right man for this. I'm happy he's finally getting, um, you know, he's not going to win. Um, but, you know, he he he's having a pay-per-view match, Elimination Chamber, um, title match. I mean, finally. But, you know, it, it still sucks because they could do so much more with him, and they're not. But, yeah. 
I agree. I'm excited to see Gargano in this one. We're going to talk quick about this before our first break. We have the VIP lounge with the WWE United States champion, Austin Theory, with MVP. Theory says, wow, first of all, beyond the disrespect, thank you for the VIP lounge. When I was a little kid, I used to watch the VIP lounge. I'm here to make the VIP lounge re- and you relevant again. And then MVP says oh, a classic. Shit. Yeah, that was dumb. MVP says a classic never goes out of style. Theory says, do you think Bobby Lashley would beat me in a match? You're talking about Elimination Chamber. I was in the most grueling spot when Brock f 5 me off the chamber. He said, I'm the, root- I'm the ruthlessness the new generation needs, but no aggression will stop me. We're going to talk about that. Um, MVP says, I'm putting... <laughs> I, just, I didn't even realize that till now. Mm-hmm. MVP says, I'm putting you on game. Bobby Lashley is dangerous. Austin Theory says, I've defeated him twice, and Bobby Lashley will not be in the Elimination Chamber match. Let's talk about things that aren't the past. Theory says, you should be worried about your health and Bobby Lashley's health. Bobby is your meal ticket. Who is going to get chewed up by Brock Lesnar down the line? Bobby Lashley walks out and Lashley attacks Theory. MVP lifts up Theory with his cane, but Lashley accidentally spears MVP and Theory walks out. You can give me your quick thoughts on this when we have some time. You know, he's definitely sending messages to John Cena. The champ is here. I'm the ruthlessness that this new generation needs, but no aggression will stop me. What do you think? Are we going to get Theory versus Cena at Mania? And uh, again, Lashley is, you know, it looks like Lashley's going after the U.S. title until Mania. What do you think? Right. Yes. Um, If Theory versus Cena happens, they're going to have to drop the United States title for Theory because I don't think it makes sense to have him a title match because then it's going to be way too predictable. Um, So hopefully Lashley does get the, the, the title soon, but it should be cool. I, I, I hope. I hope we get Theory versus Cena. I hope. And yeah, I mean, really nothing else from that. It's just basic, you know, base, basic stuff. Um, we have some more, we can talk more about this, some more backstage segments. Tim Bauer says, I'm not hard to find. Edge, I work every Monday. The number 30 spot should have been mine. Cody has stolen from me for years, and now I'm going to get my vengeance. We then get a moment with the Miz in the ring. And the Miz says, at the Royal Rumble, I got a first. I demand to be in uh, included, I want an opportunity for, you know, Raw. And then Adam Pierce says, there's someone here who deserves an opportunity, and we are going to discuss that person when we come back after our first break. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with our Raw recap. We'll be back. <laughs> 